Much anticipated return of two American astronauts finally happening today. Here's a look at footage from around 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Here are those astronauts undocking from the International Space Station as they prepare their descent home. NASA astronauts Barry Wilmore and Sonny Williams launching back in June on a mission that was expected to last just eight days, maybe 10 at the most. <laughs> the spacecraft faced multiple issues and it delayed their return. They were expected to touch down this evening nine months later to break down the journey home is the Franklin Institute's chief astronomer Derek Pitts who's with us right now. Mr. Pitts, good to have you with us here. We have all seen footage of up there uh, of the astronauts up there smiling, making the best of what was probably not the most ideal situation. Um, can you tell us what's the psyche of, a, uh, of, an, a, of an astronaut? I mean, they know things can go wrong at any time, but to be up there for so long when they expected to just be up there for a little over a week, what was that like? Yeah, Chris, good morning, and thanks for having me. You know, the uh, the longest duration missions for astronauts at International Space Station is well over 300 days. So I think their records are 340 days and 370 days. So, uh, in fact, astronauts long for an opportunity to spend this much time in space. And for these two astronauts in particular, they feel particularly fortunate because they were only supposed to be there for, as you said before, about eight to 10 days. Now it turns out that they spent nine months. And the thing that astronauts want to do more than anything else is spend time on orbit. So in a sense, they won a strange lottery, if you will, because they got to spend so much more time in space. But the other side of this, actually, Chris, is that if they had only spent eight to 10 days in space, they'd go to the bottom of the list for their next missions to go into space. So it could have been years before they got back to space again. Yeah. So uh, they do all the work that's required for them to be there as part of uh, Crew 9, and uh, they are ready to come home now. And I, you make a great point. They really kind of elevate themselves to the preeminent experts in the field right now. Anybody has any questions, I mean, they can go, kind of go right to them because they've had so much time <laughs> up there. I guess I was thinking more from the standpoint of, like, you prepare for eight to 10 days, but then when you find out, okay, it's going to be eight to 10 months, I guess that's when it, it kind of gets a little tricky. What are some of the things that they were able to do? I guess when you find out that, okay, you're not leaving after a, a week and a half, there's so many more assignments and so much more research and studies that they can take part in. What were they able to do with that extended period of time up there? Well, actually, what NASA did was they changed their assignments around for astronauts going to International Space Station. And instead of sending four astronauts for the next crew rotation, they only sent two. And this meant that uh, Wilmore and Williams got to be part of International Space Station Crew 9. So they just followed the script for Crew 9, which was to do all of the science experiments that Crew 9 of four astronauts was supposed to do. In addition, Sunita got to do two spacewalks. So that really added to uh, the work that she got done. And a lot of significant work took place in terms of preparing astronauts to go back to the moon for a possible trip at some point in the future out to Mars. Uh, to training for the human body in space, and otherwise just building up more data about what it's like for humans to live and work in space, all to be applied to going back to the moon at some point. If you could put yourself in their position right now, they're uh, strapped to that capsule with two other uh, passengers, you know, rocketing back to Earth right now, uh, a 17-hour journey from the ISS back to uh, Splashdown later tonight estimated around 6 p.m. What do you think's going through their heads right now? Uh, you know, uh, family aside, you think they're a, a little melancholy that they had to leave, or, or you think they're really excited to just get back home and be on terra firma? I do think they're really excited to get back home. It has been a long trip. They weren't expecting, you're right, Chris, they weren't expecting to be there that long. So they've missed a lot on the ground that they had probably planned to do after they returned. So, uh, and I'm sure part of that includes uh, getting a nice cold beer and uh, maybe uh, if you're from Philadelphia, you're after a good cheesesteak. <laughs> and uh, let me just ask you this before we let you go. Could this incident uh, of them being stuck up there with their original spacecraft not being what they felt safe worthy to get them back to the to, to planet Earth, could it have any impact on future space explorations of having a backup plan that's a little bit, I guess, closer to being ready to go retrieve astronauts rather than having them wait for, for 10 months? 
Yeah, the whole experience adds to our body of knowledge of what it takes for us to do space exploration. Space exploration is difficult because the technology is very, very complicated and needs to be tested over and over and over again to make sure it's going to work reliably. And on top of that, it's the question of how do our human astronauts, how do our astronauts survive you know, uh, this extended stay in space? For long trips out to Mars, this is going to be valuable information, valuable data points for how we can mitigate the difficulties of long distance space travel. So this just adds to that, that body of knowledge. It'll be very interesting to see when they do decide to go all the way out to Mars, if they raise their hands and say, you know what, I'm up for it. <laughs> I've been up there for quite some time. I wouldn't mind doing it again. Uh, Derek, thank you very much. Great to speak with you as always. Thanks, Chris.